Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. Tons of you have been recommending that I listen to Cradle of Filth, so that's going to happen for the first time today. And I've been avidly saving this moment, so much so that when I met Danny at Bloodstock in 2021, I purposefully did not go to their set so that I'd be able to have a legitimate first-time reaction here and now. And by the way, Danny is super chill and super charismatic. Let's get to it. Before we get into him here, um, first few things. I know that they have a female vocalist in this, but I did not expect her to start singing. I always thought it was going to be Danny who would start singing. So uh, just shout out. This is Annabelle Eratney, Eratney. And I think she just started with the band in 2021. So this sounds like it was maybe one of her first gigs live with them. Pretty, pretty dang cool. The atmosphere that is set up. I think is incredible from the get-go. Even from the way that we were seeing um, people play their instruments, there's a, a vibe that all of them are exuding. And there's also this smoke on stage and even like this mic stand. There's so much detail in all of the presentation of it in addition to the composition. And it was kind of crazy to start with a chorus of voices too. I thought this was going to be really heavy, heavy metal. And instead I'm feeling more symphonic. Okay, let's go back to the beginning. By the way, Bloodstock is such a cool festival. Highly, highly recommend. The makeup is amazing. something on his forehead? He put something on his forehead there. Before I thought he just touched it. What did he put on his forehead? That's his guitar pick? Is that like when you hang a spoon on your nose? Is that is that kind of what's happening there? I don't know, but... <laughs> That's that I guess that makes sense if you want to switch to a different style. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't make sense. I don't think I've ever seen anyone do that. He has so many amazing vibes that he's sending out though. Whoa. And I love the detail on his guitar as well. Interesting, as far as style goes, what they're, it sounds like what she's going for is what I'd call almost, it's like metal classical. There's a certain stylization I've heard across several metal vocalists now that it brings in some classical elements to it, but it's not 
not operatic, unless we're talking about Tarya from Nightwish, then it's operatic. Um, but we have classical elements, meaning it's sort of lighter classical singing, not full-blown opera, but lighter. And then there are some contemporary elements as well that you might hear in a pop song, um, where there's a little narrower, more forward placement and sort of a, a blending between these two. And that sound seems like it works particularly well with symphonic metal. It allows for big dramatic gestures vocally, in addition to clarity and a lot of focus to help get through a ton of different instruments that are very heavy sounding. But it's, uh, it's so interesting to hear her bring this style in right away. It seems like it fits the music quite well. a little bit of Till from Rammstein. Just a little bit. And the way that he's giving a tiny bit of pitch, but mostly just harsh vocals. Sounds like quite a bit of, I think, quite a bit of usage from the false vocal folds. And then we would get that hint of pitch coming from the true vocal folds. Very, very interesting sound. I want to come back a little bit. Okay. Let's go taste into the set. Was my soul until was the pain I faced when you left me alone in the way to my I feel a bit mesmerized with what he's doing. Like, I don't, I don't quite understand it, but I feel that there's so much depth in his character and what he just did. I'm just I feel like I'm barely grazing the top. It's very interesting. His approach, um, it's got very, uh, almost like a very vertical approach. So the first line, cold was my soul. If I were to think about seeing that, I would think cold was my soul. And I would think about lots of line and how can I continue to deliver lots of vowel between this, make it essentially more horizontal in approach. And it said, cold was my soul. It's just, it's very, very vertical, almost punchy in the delivery. I'm gonna go back one more time. Interesting. Cold was my soul until was the pain I faced when you left me alone in the way. And his facial expression with it, it really, it feels, even though we have a gruff sound, his facial expression seems really vulnerable and open. I faced when you left me alone in the way. I, I think it's interesting to always have clean vocals and harsh vocals at the same time. And definitely, um, we have that little bit of classical element. By the way, when you hear stuff that feels a, a little more warm or domey in her voice, that's what I would often attribute to as being more classical or when we get a little bit more vibrato in the sound as well. 
And then every now and then she'll go more forward with the placement where she's really um, often straightening out the tone as well. And that's what I call more contemporary singing that you'll see in a lot of things that are hmm, mainstream, but also non-mainstream. Uh, we have all kinds, right? Metal isn't necessarily mainstream. So things that would have a more belty kind of placement, uh, essentially forward. So it's gonna hang out in the mask like this when it's more contemporary usually. And then when you have lots of dome back here, that's gonna be more classical. Of course, both things are used in both styles. It's just that the balance tends to be a little different. Um, I'm gonna go back one more time. So on I, the way that she sings that would be more forward. And right before that, when she went up high and we heard some more vibrato, that would be a little more uh, domey, essentially. It has more loft in it. Lots of loft right there. Yeah, lots of loft again. sound to me did not sound like that was necessarily being created by the false vocal folds. It sounded like a different kind of distortion or maybe it was false folds, but it just sounded like there was so much more pharyngeal constriction that was happening. So right down here is where your true folds hang out and then right above them are your false vocal folds. Above that, as you gotta go up through the tube, there's lots of different places that can have constriction and you can have sources or origins of sounds from those places as well. That's where we get often more of the fry screams from. So in this top part, to me, when he went up to that higher pitched, harsher vocal, it sounds like he really constricted a lot of that in there. It's, it's a very, very fascinating sound. It's, it's like almost like if Kermit the Frog were to go into harsh vocals, he would have tons of constriction back there as well. Just tons and tons and tons. Um, it has to be so, so close off and that helps with this like high, high area of pitch to be um, essentially created. <laughs> Somehow reminds me of an anime character. There's there's something so intriguing about his character and the way he presents it. It's I feel like I'm watching a story unfold more than I'm necessarily listening to a song. <laughs> interesting high sound in there again as well. It, I feel like he's rapping more than singing at times because again of this delivery of how he's um, feeling a lot more vertical to me than really horizontal long lines. Although some rappers have amazing long smooth lines too. It's just fascinating. What was that high sound he made in there? <laughs> Yeah, 
By the way, nymphetamine, I believe, is um, essentially a combination word of a nymphet and amphetamine. So you're kind of getting this idea of um, a drug and a woman at the same time. It maybe seems like the woman becomes irresistible, possibly, but some sort of like uh, drug-induced uh, affection possibly for a woman. It's a, a very, very interesting word and I like it as the title of the song especially. Wow. You know, sometimes I really pick the wrong moments to stop. <laughs> that was one of them right before this really high moment. I wish I could see his mouth. Was that him or was that her? I think that was him. overlap there the way he had just a, essentially a false fold growl underneath just as she comes in um, both had a similar length it was really duetting at that point it felt uh it felt like maybe a little bit of harmony but harmony I usually think of as two defined pitches and obviously his pitch is not defined with these harsh vocals so maybe that's a new definition of harmony <laughs> Interesting. Those high sounds are definitely him. I thought they might have been her at first. Interesting. I don't know. I don't know how that's being made. It does sound like there's some true vocal folds in there making a pitch, but it. Uh, there's something else going on. I definitely think we've got some higher constriction going on too. Whoa, what an interesting sound. It's almost bird-like or crow-like. falsetto in that area. It sounds like he's a f doing essentially a falsetto scream. So essentially the position um, of the true vocal folds is such that we don't have much TA or thyroid engagement anymore. It's primarily going to be cricothyroid engagement. And those vocal folds are going wacka 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 together fairly quickly to create a high pitch. But then he's sort of funneling the sound through his vocal tract in a very, very strange way. Like, it is, it is a very unique sound. I wonder what that feels like. He reminds me of Strong Bad. That's, there's something about that. It just reminds me of Strong, Strong Bad. 
Notice when he's doing the, the lower sounds, he tends to round his mouth and it actually will elongate the vocal tract and that can cause the resonance of the vocal tract to highlight things that are deeper and warmer in sound. Really cool show. Oh. Such a crazy sound. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I was told to expect strange sounds, unusual vocal creation, essentially, but I don't know how you can really expect the kinds of sounds that Danny made in here. Right, those high pitches in particular, I still am not sure what exactly he was doing. And the only way that we can really know is by sticking a camera down his throat. I don't know if he's ever done that. We did do that to Will Ramos from Lorna Shore, and whoa, that was incredible. But a lot of metal vocalists have developed without having necessarily a roadmap for how to do it. It's more a process of trying things, making sure you don't hurt yourself at the same time, and that might be why we get so many different unique sounds, I think, out of various metal performers. It's very, very intriguing to me. If you would like to listen to some of that Lorna Shore analysis, check that video out over here, and I hope to see you again soon.